types of writing resources, and library resources. The course I'm teaching right now uh, focuses on sustainability. Yes. Uh, library resources, uh, and then uh, selected resources uh, from you or to give access to OPAC system and uh, uh, electronic uh, journals or, or, or selected from you? Uh, as uh, entities? A, a, a bit of both. I've, I've worked with the librarians and have asked them, you know, what are the sort, what are the resources, sure. what are the resources that students really need to have access to? And then I have tailored it for this particular class. Okay, for instance, um, <clears throat> we have information buttons. So the student can click on this, and this goes to the main information guide page on the library's website. And is this strict to your topic or uh, general entities? This particular one goes to the main, main site. However, I work with a librarian who worked with me on my course to develop a particular information guide for my class. Yeah. Okay. If I may, David, so library work with you and come up with your course specific information and resources. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, so um, Teresa Calcagno is the librarian who has been working with me and I told her you know, my students are focusing on sustainability but they're science majors, computer science majors, engineering majors and I wanted an information guide from the library that the students could go to to access information. <clears throat> so she came up with a series of databases that students could look at. Uh, one thing which I really like is she put our working definition of sustainability here on the main, main part of the page so the students can con continuously refer to this. Because even though they've heard this term throughout time, they think of sustainability mostly related to environmentalism. But this particular concept can be applied to any facet of life. <clears throat> so there are some interactive tools in here as well, but she has a whole bunch of links which I provide to the students that she's added to this. So this is where my input has come into this information that I have. But she's using her expertise as a reference librarian to say, these are the resources which students need in general to do their research and also do their writing. There are also some writing links in here as well. But then she's been able to incorporate the specific material that I have provided for students. If I may ask you, is the same service provided to other faculty members? Yes. Mm -hmm. And how is it been announced? Uh, within English, it is announced at the beginning of the semester. So you know, if you're interested in having a reference librarian work with you, contact this person. There's a deadline, because, of course, because they don't want the reference librarians to be inundated with work, and you need to spread it out over the course of the semester. Great service. Fantastic service, yes. You know, I, I, I can teach students how to use library resources, and I can teach it well, but I think it's very important for the students to have another face another resource to go to besides me. Because the more resources that a student has working with him or her, the stronger the outcome will be. Um, <clears throat> one thing that I really liked that she added on this is environmental organizations and also US government agencies. So she was able to pull in some things that I didn't even think about in developing this particular information guide. Um, the information guides in general are fairly standard. There are ways to evaluate information. And here in the United States, we're really, um, mnemonics are really popular. So we have this thing called the CRAP test, mm -hmm. which we've used quite a bit. Uh, an acronym for remembering criteria to use when evaluating information. Is it current? Is it relevant? Is it authoritative? Is it accurate? What's the purpose behind it? That's good. And so, you know, if uh, many of my students have heard this before. So I say, you know, apply the crap test whenever you're looking at something <laughs> in particular. And they giggle. I'm sorry? I said, and they giggle. And they giggle. And, and remember they giggle. it. And they remember it. Yeah. Exactly. They're nice and harmonic. 
Um, there's some information here on writing and citing. Yes. I wonder how many uh, libraries librarians in the main library. Um, I think there are about 25 reference librarians, and they focus in different disciplinary areas. So, for instance, Teresa focuses on science and technology and engineering. So she was lucky to assign me. If I were teaching business communications for a course, I'd have another one that could be assigned to me. Uh, there's a writing and citing page on here, information about plagiarism and how to avoid plagiarism, creating citations, co a lot of copyright information, and, and what I like is there's, there's some redundancy. So students are getting hit with a lot of the information in here, in the information guide, but they have it in a separate, in another place within my course as well. So they get the information in several places. Okay, so that's the information guide. <coughs> Uh, we also have web guides by discipline in the library. So, for instance, I can't. If I, I actually have an account in one, in one of my classes who got into into my particular class by mistake and couldn't get into the right class, so I've got this account in class. So the student can go to the info guide and go to accounting and tax and get the information that he or she would need from that paper. Um, then these are some these are some of the main library sources. Access to the library databases, the catalog. Okay, so all the reference information that a student is going to need is available. Since this is a writing course, I do have writing resources. Writing resources for biology and nursing science and mathematics, technology and engineering, chemistry, and then I also have some others, because occasionally I get students from other disciplines in my class as well. So they're getting consistent information about writing resources. For instance, with science and mathematics. So we'll come to a new page. <clears throat> I'll have all the different style guides that are within a particular discipline. Writing guidelines for engineering and science students, articles on writing and science, general guide to science writing, writing and medicine and science, directories of science resources by discipline. And then this one is really useful. Associations, societies, and organizations within science. <clears throat> so this is the one that's specific for science and math, and we have others as well for you know, chemistry, so forth and so on. Um, I, I, I ran out of business cards, so some of the handouts don't have my business card on there. But if you go to my webpage, composition resources. <clears throat> uh, you might want to write on your um, handout. David, will there be an opportunity for participants to access to your course and see it, how it's done? Yes. As a guest? As a guest, yes. If you allow them, I think there are areas of linguistic, uh, English, you know, they might be interested. In fact, they are a majority here. Major they are majority here. So, <laughs> if you would kindly make one course available to them as a guest, yes. I promise they will not take your test. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Two months, at least. Can we have that access? Yeah. Since, since, I, since I have been involved in the administration in the English department, um, I thought it was really important for faculty to have access to all this information. <clears throat> so I've created te technology resources for English faculty, but um, these are the different disciplinary um, guides that students can use. And so you can access that through my website. I'll put down the bottom there, classweb.gmu.edu slash dbeach. <clears throat> uh, feel free to use this. 
at any time. I think there are some tremendous resources. But these are the resources. How about a full-blown course? A full-blown course? I, I, can, I can add them to that. If you kindly, are you interested to access yes, to the full run course? Yes, please. Okay, please. Thank okay. you. Um, let me see. These are just some general, some other general links. Um, documentation, plagiarism, copyright, sustainability, some other library resources. So this is this main page is where the students can have access to the resources which they need in order to complete their course. Um, I also have a section on learning modules. Let me go to student view so you can see that. Okay. So, <clears throat> I have one on using sources that students can go through. Um, for some reason, this is not opening up in a separate, a separate window, because it, it should be opening up in a separate window. But they can go through short lessons. One thing that I always tell instructors is that when you're providing learning modules and lessons like this, make them short because if it's too much, it's way too way too much information for someone to absorb at one time. So if you chunk the material, then the students will be able to absorb it in a much easier way. Um, <clears throat> this one here for sustainability, for example. This will go to a web page. <clears throat> What I've wanted my students to do is understand the concept of sustainability. So we have this learning, I have this developed this learning module for them. And again, come back to the definition, which is on the information guide, which is on the syllabus, which is on other, which is on their assignments as well. So they're getting hit with the information in various places. They have the definition. And then they have a couple of videos. I see this one is down. Uh, but they're, they get to see sustainability from a variety of resources. One from Microsoft, one from Subaru, or maybe just some uh, script error here. One from Yale University. And then there are resources for them to take a look at. And then some questions at the end for them to consider. What are the current needs in your field of study? What are the future needs in your field of study that you can clearly define? What might be some future needs in your field of study? How can what we do now affect what happens in the future? So I want students to start thinking about this concept as they move throughout the course. So there's the learning modules section. One thing which I'm involved in this particular week, I'm not meeting with my hybrid classes this week, but we're having an online discussion. And since this is a writing course, oh, again, this is one of the things which I have found with e-learning to be really effective. If I take the classroom discussion that I would normally have out of the classroom and onto the online environment, students are writing. But they're doing something other than just writing. They're writing to a greater public. Whereas they, they oftentimes they see writing an essay and I am the audience. Now they have a much bigger audience and a more public audience. So they have to think about their relationship to that other audience as well. I want to show you this one particular uh, discussion. We don't teach because I know I don't have that many questions to students. <laughs> I always have a section in there where they can send me some general questions. I have announcements. But then we have this we started our discussion, which I'm calling blogs. And in this first week, I had students watch a 20-minute video called The Story of Stuff. And it's about the production cycle. And it's about how we live in a consumerist society and in a throwaway society and what that means to the viability of the planet in the future. Um, you know, here's a quotation from the actual site. From its extraction through sale, use, and disposal, all the stuff in our lives affects communities at home and abroad, yet most of this is hidden from view. The story of stuff is a 20 minute, fast paced, fast filled look at the underside of our production and consumption patterns. The story of stuff exposes the connections between a huge number of environmental and social issues 
and calls us together to create a more sustainable and just world. I'll teach you something, it will make you laugh, and it may just and it just may change the way you look at all the stuff in your life forever. Okay. So when I gave this to the students, okay, th this is one element where critical thinking is starting to come into the whole online environment here. Right. <clears throat> I haven't said much of it except for one interesting adjective, which I'll put up here. Comment on a controversial 20-minute video titled The Story of Stuff. And then it said, after you viewed it, please comment on it. No right or wrong answers. We're just interested in initial comments. Okay. Traditional age of the students in this course, 20 plus. I have some students who are older, 40s, 50s. I think I have a six student in their 60s in my class. Uh, <clears throat> this semester, but these are juniors and seniors mostly. And the initial reaction when they watch this is, wow, I didn't know some of this. And so what's interesting is the students are getting on this kind of bandwagon. Oh, we need to recycle more. We need to re really think about our environment, what we're doing with the products that we consume. <clears throat> and then I have a few students who are in the class who have really thought about this carefully as they go through the information. And after a day or so, and there have been a lot of comments made on it, I put up a post. I said, like a good start to the discussion. Some of you have been surprised at Annie Leonard's message. Some already knew about it. Some were shocked into thinking about the world around us. And some were skeptical because of unsupported data. Some saw the slant or bias that Leonard has. So now we have to dissect this a bit. It seems like a great bandwagon, but. Okay, and this is where critical thinking starts coming to play. You might want to Google Annie Leonard and the story of stuff and see what others have to say about it. Make sure you check out the sources. What authority do the critics have to challenge Leonard and her claims? And considering the discussion so far and what you find in doing some research on Leonard and the story of stuff, what are your thoughts? on this 20-minute video being used nationwide in elementary, middle, and high schools. Okay, so this is one thing I want the students to think about. Because this video definitely comes from a liberal, left-side viewpoint. And the message is important, but I want students to think about slant and bias and something. And to try to think of everything. The interesting thing about this particular video, as I said here, is being used nationwide in elementary, middle, and high schools to teach youngsters about environmental concerns. Important for them to understand. But also, as I say, what about the message which is coming across? Okay, so as, as you can see in this particular discussion forum, let me go back to this spot right here, this first blog. We started this on Monday. And already, there are 70 messages in there. And they're pretty interesting messages where students are starting to explore this from a variety of perspectives. They're listening to each other. And they're arguing with each other. One thing which I find really interesting in an e-learning environment is that people Students who would not normally speak up in class love to write. And they really start building each other. Now, this one is fantastic. 70 messages in a couple of days. And we've already started our second topic, sustainability as a concept. And we started that last night, and already there are 14 messages again. Yes? Uh, one question, the research question for you, is that the students who are lurking, not saying a thing, but they are participating in discussion, not saying anything, just lurking. Mm -hmm. As a professor, what do you think, how you feel about them? Uh, participation, active participation in this is part of their grade. So I, you know, I've made this a critical part, but I think the two weeks when we're blogging is worth 10% of their grade. And so they have protocols and rubrics about what constitutes a, an A, a B, or C within this particular part of the discussion. So they do need to be active. If they lurk, they're not going to get a good grade. You know, they can read it and get the information, but they all but they need to be active. 
in order to get the grade. So yeah. that's the way to keep them from working. Is there any way to summarize the the, the, the messages which came to the mm -hmm. system and to to come to conclusion or the student about the topic? Um, I, I see that as my role to take to look at what they're talking about and synthesize the material and provide a summation of what they've been talking about. Um, some students, since this is running in a one week period, there are cases where, it, since we have somewhat of a non-traditional school age population here at Mason, so we have some people who are working full time, some people who have to go off on a business trip, uh, some people who are taking care of ill parents or things like that, and sometimes, you know, uh, you know, the students say, this particular week, I'm on a business trip, I have to go out of town, and I say, okay, well, try to be involved as much as possible, but what you can do is you can provide the summary statement. So I give, the, I give a couple of options in cases like that. And it, I'll still provide summary, summary as well, but this might give someone who didn't have a chance to go on every day and participate a chance to participate. So I've been very pleased with the discussion we've been having in this particular class. I had one class where it was like, okay, I have to keep out sending reminders. You know, we're we're in day three of this now, then you need to be participating. Well, one more question. How much time do you spend for a course responding to a student's blog or a student's discussion forum? Um, not as much as you think. I, I do read through every posting. And I participate as well. You know, if I if I see something where I can bring in some information, I become I've been part of the discussion. I'll, like for instance, with this one, where in this in these first couple of days, and this being the first blog that we've had, I wanted it to be more practice. <clears throat> so, you know, a day and a half into it, I, or I said, you know, good start. But here's something I want you to think about now. And um, let's just take a look at the new, the new comments that people have. Because there are four new comments in here that I haven't even seen. <clears throat> um, oh, actually, this is a really interesting one. <clears throat> I was thinking about bringing it up, but now that I've shown it. <clears throat> you know, I was talking about the issue of students, young students, being shown this particular video. And somebody said, uh, they're talking about, to, for elementary students it would be a little intimidating, it would be a good start to introduce the concept early on. If it were shown to elementary kids, it might not be fully understood, so forth and so on. <clears throat> but we've been